The Central Tibetan Administration recently held a two-day consortium conference of the Tibetan Digital Library as part of strengthening cultural resilience of Tibetan communities. The project is one of the major initiatives of the 16 Kashak aimed towards collection, preservation and promotion of Tibetan cultural manuscripts and documents in the realms of technology. The Department of Religion and Culture under the Central Tibetan Administration is implementing the Tibetan Digital Library project along with its technical partner Wadwani AI and Merlam IT. Today, to learn more about the Tibetan Digital Library project, we have invited Tundup Siring, the head of the Cultural Section, Department of Religion and Culture, and Tenzi Tile, Deputy Chief of Party for this project from Merlam IT. Welcome to our program. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so to start with um, uh, so can you tell us uh, what is uh, Tibetan Digital Library Project and also uh, why is it needed in the uh, Tibetan uh, monasteries and uh, cultural institutions? Um, and thank you, Pandela, for inviting me. Uh, so the Tibetan Digital Library Project is implementing by the Department of Religion and Culture under the Strengthening Cultural Resilience of the Tibetan Community uh, funded by USID. Uh, it is uh, officially launched by Honorable Sikyong in November 2023 as one of the biggest digital projects of the current Kasha. So the primary objective of this uh, project is preservation of the ancient Tibetan manuscripts and cultural artifacts that has been uh, physically preserved in Tibetan monastic institutions and cultural insti uh, in centers and uh, uh, providing the secure accessibility of these resources through digital platform to the Tibetan monasteries, uh, education academy and in general public. Uh, so nowadays the digital library is incredibly useful uh, to access the vast amount of the resources uh, through digital platform. So, so many countries around the world already started to digitize uh, their uh, national resources and uh, other rare document. Uh, recognizing the importance of preserving all these resources in digital platform. Uh, so we have been in exile for more than 60 years. So during this period, uh, many Tibetan uh, older generation brought uh, plenty of the uh, invaluable resources from the Tibet. And now these resources are uh, currently currently preserving in the uh, Tibetan monastic institution. Uh, so through this, pro so it is the uh, right time to uh, digitize all this resource in um, digital format for better preservation. Uh, so the, the, um, in uh, recently, uh, our department conducted a rapid ass assessment in 25 monastery institutions before we received this award. Uh, so more than 75% of the monastery yet to start digitize their resources. And may, uh, most of the monasteries are facing the challenges of uh, deterioration of the uh, original resources because of the uh, um, frequent human handling and environment uh, and weather condition. Uh, so we started uh, this project to support the Tibetan monastery institution uh, to digitize uh, their resources. Uh, so uh, since these projects also required um, many technical ex expertise, so we have Malam ID and um, Malam ID and Wadwani AI uh, as our technical partner to uh, provide and to develop the uh, digital uh, tools and uh, cataloging system and uh, digital po online digital portal. And we also engage with the PDRC uh, to assess the landscape assessment and collection of the resources. Uh, because B BDRC has more than 40 years of experience in digitization and collection of resources. They are the pioneers in this field, right? Digitization of manuscripts. Yeah. Talking about the manuscripts and the scriptures, um, um, how many are we talking about uh, in terms of collecting and preservation uh, here in this project? And uh, how many monastic institution and cultural centers are participating? Uh, we saw that recently, just a few weeks ago, we had a um, conference, yeah. uh, two-day <coughs> conference on this uh, project. It, yeah. uh, you can say inaugural project, right? Yeah. So how many uh, monastic centers and cultural centers participated? Uh, uh, there are many, uh, plenty of the uh, accessible and non-accessible resources in the monasteries. But right now, we cannot say that this much of the resources available in this and that monasteries, because these are part of the activities is yet to start. 
uh, we will soon start the landscape assessment and the collection of the catalog from the monasteries. So during the uh, landscape assessment, we will find out how much resources available in one particular monasteries, and we will we will also identify it, uh, which monastery started to digitize in their resources. If they already started the uh, digitization of their resources, then our uh, technical team will check whether uh, these resources are good enough to preserve in the uh, digital platform or need to rescan. Um, <coughs> so uh, regarding the uh, participation of the monastery, uh, we have, uh, there are uh, 50 Tibetan monastery institutions including uh, five uh, nunnery and eight cultural institutions. So this list uh, was finalized during the consortium conference uh, organized by our department uh, recently at Taramsala. Uh, so, before the consortium conference, we also did some assessment uh, for the uh, identifying the monasteries. Uh, and our department, we have um, 292 Tibetan monastery institutions in India, Nepal, and Bhutan. So, uh, uh, all these monasteries are our prime target group for the digitization. And then, uh, in the initial phase, we uh, selected uh, 105 monastic institutions uh, who are supposed to have uh, resources in their monasteries by uh, thorough discussions in our department meeting and consulting the expert. And then, in the second uh, uh, stakeholder analysis, uh, we uh, uh, 65 monasteries uh, has been confirmed to have our resources in their monasteries. And then we finally invited them for the consortium conference and finalized the list. So totally we have 58 Tibetan monastic institutions and uh, cultural centers in this digitalization project. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And uh, uh, can you tell us uh, what is the role of Melomite and the, your uh, involvement in this project? Okay. Thank you so much, Mandela, for your question. So Melam IT serves as one of the partners in uh, building this Tibetan digital library platform. And what I would want to reiterate is that Melam IT is, um, is collaborating with the Indian company called Wadwani AI in making sure that the Tibetan digital library platform is for the Tibetan people and caters for the Tibetan users primarily. So Melam IT in its uh, ca capacity helps uh, Wadwani AI in building the AI models in making sure that the data that Wadwani AI receives are correct, and also making sure that Wadwani AI, whatever product that is um, released from Wadwani AI regarding the Tibetan Digital Library project, be it the Tibetan Library Management System app or the Tibetan Digital Library platform, would be culturally respectful and useful for the Tibetan people. Talking about the Tibetan Library Management System, uh, can you uh, elaborate a little bit more on that and how is it going to uh, be help proof helpful and uh, what are its uh, key features and functions? Okay. So the Tibetan Library Management System app is, um, so let me just explain the Tibetan Digital Library project first. So the Tibetan Digital Library project in terms of deliverables can be divided into two, uh, can be divided into like two main products. The first product will be the Tibetan Library Management System app, and the second one will be the Tibetan Digital Library Platform. So the Tibetan Library Management System app would be actually developed primarily by Wadwani AI through the help of Merlam and also BDRC, because they have quite an extensive experience in building those sort of applications. So what we did in terms of uh, the Tibetan Library Management System app is to make sure that, you know, we do not deduplicate the data that we already have and also make sure that we have catalogued all the resources that is available in the monasteries. So what it does is that it makes the work of the digitization much easier when it's carried out in its full phase regarding the landscape assessment or be it in the digitization process. So the Tibetan Library Management System app, the main feature would be cataloging, main the the next, the next main feature would be the, the realization of how much digitization needs to be done and how much digitization has already been done. So those are the main features of the TLMS app. And uh, uh, can you also tell us, it, um, has the work already started or is it still in the process? So the TLMS app, uh, <coughs> since we have been working uh, for the TLMS app for the past four or five months, it is in its final phase of releasing 
So the first version will be available by the end of April so that we can do the full landscape assessment and we can try it uh, on our pilot monasteries. There would be three pilot monasteries that we would like to conduct the pilot assessment with. We will test out the, the Tibet Library Management System app and we will see if they would prefer like certain kind of features, if they would if they would not like certain kind of features, we will take it out. We will test it out with multiple users so as to uh, ascertain the needs and the favors of the Tibetan uh, of the Tibetan users. Oh, thank you. And Tenzin uh, La, so uh, can you uh, tell us uh, what future does the uh, Tibetan Digital Library hold in terms of introducing Tibetan culture uh, to the younger generation of Tibetans? Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe uh, the Tibetan Digital Library pr uh, will serve as the uh, best medium to in introducing the Tibetan culture to the younger generation. In the past, uh, when there is no digital library, and the, our older generation, if they want to study something about Tibetan culture, uh, they uh, often uh, solely uh, depend on the um, physical books. So nowadays, um, because, the, because of the unprecedented uh, advancement of the modern technology and digital system, if we want to study something about Tibetan um, culture, uh, we can directly access, uh, access the uh, vast amount of the resource available in the digital platform. Uh, especially in our case, uh, we all know that Tibetans are scattered across the world and uh, there is a very limited access of the uh, Tibetan Buddhist uh, manuscripts that are available in the Marasi institutions. So uh, this Tibetan Digital Library will play the instrumental role in preserving and uh, introducing the Tibetan culture to the younger generation. Uh, when we say about Tibetan culture, it is all about uh, Buddhist knowledge and thought. Uh, whenever His Holiness Dalai Lama also talk about Tibetan culture, His Holiness says, uh, often refers the Tibet, uh, Tibetan Buddhism is the in, uh, inalienable part of the Tibetan culture since a uh, thousand years. So uh, this digital library project, uh, we will uh, support the Tibetan monastery to digitize their mona uh, m m resources in the monasteries and we will provide the necessary training for them. And we will also uh, get some several resources from the PDRC to make the Tibetan Digital Library more resourceful. Uh, moreover, uh, once the digitization project is completed, we are planning to hold uh, online uh, uh, different activities such as online uh, uh, Tibetan language class and uh, 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 distance studies on the Tibetan Buddhism and cu cultural immersion program. Uh, with the aim, it's aimed to preserve and introduce the Tibetan culture for the younger generation. And uh, when you talk about uh, digitizing the uh, manuscripts or scripture from the different monasteries, Tibetan yeah. and Buddhist monasteries in India and uh, and Tibetan diaspora area, right, uh, around the world. So um, how is it possible? Uh, is there any uh, time limit uh, for this project? Suppose, say, like you're going to finish this project yeah. in five to uh, four to five years, or, or is it more, or is it less than that? Yeah, so this uh, Tibetan Digital Library is a three years uh, project, and uh, uh, in the first year, uh, we are planning to uh, uh, digitize the uh, Tibetan manuscripts in the monasteries in uh, 20 monasteries, the 13 monasteries in South, and uh, seven monastery, uh, monasteries and cultural institutions in North. Mm, okay, and um, uh, so in this uh, day and age, due to the advanced technology, uh, how challenging do you see, uh, is, it all, is it not only to have a Tibetan culture in the traditional form in the, the realms of the up-to-date uh, technology that we see uh, these days, right? But also to ensure that uh, the introduction of the user-friendly uh, technology uh, to our community uh, that has just begun uh, entering the technological world. So, um what I, would, what I see here in the Tibetan culture context with regards to AI or any kind of like digital, uh, digital resources is that um, the challenges would be to have them in first. So having the Tibetan manuscripts in the digital platform, having, the, having Tibetan culture uh, noted in the, um, in the digital realm, that will be the first challenge in itself. And then to make context of it, 
then, then put more uh, advertisement into it. So those are the sort of challenges that I think uh, would be about that pro about this digital library project and any other project that that aims to put more um, that aims to put more Tibetan content into the digital realm. So with regards to this project, as we as we as we have discussed earlier, this project will focus focus its huge. Uh, energy and capital into making sure that it is a user-centric platform and I think this is a relatively new concept in the Tibetan world because we haven't yet focused that much of our product for the users. So I think this will be the first time where we will do landscape assessment to make sure that you know the platform or the Tibetan Library Management System app, if it's useful for the users like librarians or the monks who will primarily use it. So those sort of contexts I think we are pioneering with the help of um, with Wadwani taking the lead and Mulam AI assisting. So we are taking we are taking a huge step in terms of like making sure that any kind of app within the Tibetan uh, digital realm, like making sure that it caters to its user. I think that's the first in um, in in a decade or so. So that's what I hope uh, would come out of this project as well. And with regards to AI and uh, making sure that the dig digital library is imbued with AI, it's, um, it's important to note what AI is actually. So AI would be artificial intelligence in short. And uh, what it means is that uh, we have a computer or a digital system that can actually uh, do work that will actually require human intelligence like processing or understanding natural language, understanding patterns, understanding complex things, and also deciding on certain things. So those are the things that usually a human would do with the help of their intelligence. Now artificial intelligence can actually do that. So those are, those in terms of the digital library would be like we would imbue them, would, we would imbue the platform with four main features. The four main features are pioneered by Mulam AI, but what Wani would make it better and make it more accessible. So those are machine translation, optical character recognition, speech to text, and text to speech. So let's say I'll just give an example for uh, OCR, uh, optical character recognition. So what that feature will do is that it will actually recognize all the text within, let's say, a manuscript, and be able to extract it out and be able to use it for other, other, other usage, like machine translation or summarizing and those sort of things. So um, I think the Digital Library project will um, get all those AI features and make it more understandable for the Tibetan youth and also for people who have less understanding about Tibetan language and Buddhism. Mm, okay. And uh, is Milam IT bringing together Tibetan uh, IT professional in this uh, project uh, by providing training to them? Um, indirectly, Milam AI is um, Milam, Milam AI is built by Tibetan IT professionals. There are more than ten Tibetan IT professionals who work day and night in making sure that whatever Milam AI releases in terms of its machine translation capabilities, in terms of the models that I said earlier, um, they are working day and night. But in terms of this project, it's uh, it's a bit separate. So the work of like. Uh, training the IT professionals, the work of uh, capacity building uh, Tibetan youth to make sure that they take certain routes in terms of uh, digital uh, world, uh, that falls under the purview of Wadwani AI. And what they are doing is that they are, uh, they are conducting workshops in the future and they are also conducting, um, they are also taking in internships. I, I believe they are taking eight internships uh, and DORC and Wadwani has received in total uh, more than 50 internship applications. So it's a positive outlook and that's on this area. Okay, and um, thank you. And Tindup uh, Tindla, so uh, since uh, Tibetan Digital Library is, uh, this project is one of the uh, biggest project of this uh, 16 Kasha. And uh, so can you uh, talk to us about what are the other uh, projects in the pipeline <coughs> regarding uh, towards the successful implementation of this project? Uh, well, uh, the digitization project is uh, one of the key priority of the current Kasha. Uh, there are uh, many activities implementing by the uh, different departments uh, for the digitization project. And 
the Tibetan Digital Library is uh, one of the biggest uh, project related to the digitization. There are several activities under the Tibetan Digital Library project. Uh, some of the major activity uh, we have uh, just completed recently and there are still more major activity in the coming year. Uh, uh, the stakeholder analysis and uh, um, est establishment of the consortium are the two major activity we uh, recently completed. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, um, and during the stakeholder analysis, we identify the monasteries uh, who uh, have uh, resources in their monasteries, and we also establish the consortium body uh, during the conference. And then uh, in the coming month, as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, uh, landscape assessment in the coming month. So during the landscape assessment, our um, digitization team uh, will visit the monasteries and uh, provide the uh, digital equipment such as uh, QR code generator and the scanner and computer to the uh, monasteries. And also the uh, necessary training will be also provided uh, to the uh, librarian, monastery librarian and uh, staff. Currently, we are developing the uh, consortium model and its policy uh, with the Tibetan Legal Association. Uh, so this model is for the smooth functioning of the Tibetan Digital Library in future. So apart from this, there are uh, several activities, uh, but not directly related to the uh, digitization project, but it is, it is uh, uh, youth skill development and the livelihood opportunity. Uh, next month, uh, we have internship program in collaboration with the Vatvani AI for six months. And um, we also have uh, animation course for eight Tibetan youth and provide them uh, for the job opportunity. Uh, to develop the uh, animation video related to the Tibetan culture. We also have um, symposium on Tibetan culture and Buddhist, Buddhism for the Tibetan youth. Thank you so much uh, to both of you for coming to our show and talking to us about the Tibetan Digital Library. And it, it has been a very insightful uh, discussion and lovely talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much.